this camera will show both the chairperson and the speaker. And this one of the changes. We are ready to begin. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So this is our test with our brand new three cameras and, and we were able to show uh, with the three cameras onto YouTube Live. But just now I'm not sure if I'm supposed to turn off the speakers so there's no echo or leave them on. So hopefully the sound is being sent. I would think that at least the video is being sent I'm hoping the sound is being sent, but I don't know. It was kind of distracting to have, uh, there were two echoes, one from my phone and one from the computer. But uh, we're very happy to have this much of the effort going on. So as we continue to play, this is now our speaker view. So from here, we'll have a view of uh, the chairperson podium. and this main podium here. So people are slowly coming into the condo. So we're waiting just a minute and I wanted to explain to you what's going on here as we change things up a little bit. So I'd like to share our service order for today. Uh, we'll have the reading of the three treasures and follow by, I'll take my seat on the altar for the chanting of the Sambujo and the Sambutsuge. Okay, so please be prepared. Uh, the main chants again, Sambujo and Sambutsuge. So, let's see. Uh, Sambutsuge is on page 79 in your purple books and so hopefully you have been set up to do it uh, have these available to you at home so again three treasures sambujo sambutsuge nembutsu and ekoku will complete the chanting portion of our service and then i'll come back here for our dharma message so with that we will begin Three treasures. <clears throat> Hard is it to be born into human life. Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed Ones. Now we hear it. If we do not realize the truth in this life, when will it be realized? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in the Buddha. 
may we absorb ourselves in the principle of the way to enlightenment and awaken in ourselves the supreme will. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we be submerged in the depths of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in the Sangha. May we live in harmony in the great assembly as disciples of Buddha and be freed from all hindrances, becoming units of true accord in the life of harmony, in a spirit of universal oneness, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even through myriad ages of kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teachings.
at the beginning and we know a recording's going on so everyone's like shh, shh, shh we're recording and so when the chanting starts everyone's kind of hesitant to chant huh? so it takes a while before your voices that I can hear is everyone still trying to be quiet rather than chanting out loud so uh, we all have to become accustomed to this and, and when it's time to chant just belt it out okay all right I appreciate that so today uh, again, we're testing the three camera setup and I'm trying to uh, shift from one view to the next and using uh, different views for the transitions and all these hopefully translate well. If you're watching at home, send me, a, me an email if the voice cuts out or if the sound is too loud and things like this and let us know so we can uh, know how to adjust as we continue this process. Okay. So today, um, you know, with this season, very recently, last couple of weeks, last week at Nenmanji and the week before here in Alameda, we had our Hanuman City celebration and very festive and colorful, bright uh, spring flowers showing. And uh, before that, they had the Cherry Blossom Festival in San Francisco. Uh, a few of us were sitting in a booth and meeting many people who wanted to get some additional information about the Buddhist temples here that we have, uh, Shin Buddhist temples that circle the Bay, the Bay District and beyond. And so people were stopping in at the booth. But one of the things that we did not get to visit is that they had a Ikebana flower uh, demonstrations and, and showing of their arrangements, all the different schools of Ikebana were able to display their arrangements in the building of the uh, Japan town in San Francisco. So here in Alameda, Jane Naito has taught the Sogetsu School of Japanese Flower Arrangement, Ikebana, for a number of years here and in many other areas. Uh, my mother has taught work for well over 60 years in the Ohara School of Ikebana flower arranging, so she has uh, students and classes here and there as well. And so there's one more school called the Ikenobo School. And so this is the oldest and I think the largest school. And these three, Ikenobo, Ohara, Sogetsu, are the three main schools of Ikebana in, uh, in the world. Okay, so there are other schools minor schools or offshoots and so they are here and there in the Bay Area and throughout the world as well but these three are the main schools and the Ikenobo school has ties to the early beginnings of Buddhism being brought to Japan and connections to our temple so I thought I'd share kind of that history today it's kind of interesting to see how our temples are connected to the Ikebana traditions in Japan, okay? So before the pandemic, 
they used to have an annual, very large Ikebana International Flower Arrangement uh, demonstrations and arrangements that were displayed in the Hall of Flowers in, in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. And helping my mother's group, I was able to go there annually. And so I really enjoyed the very large uh, showing. And what was nice was that all these different schools, you could see their arrangements side by side. And so all the more, you could see uh, the different um, traits and characteristics of these different schools as you went to, to view them. So right next to each other, you could see, and you could see the differences, the style of vases they use, the where they place, how they place the flowers, and all of these things, you could notice this, okay? So I really enjoy going to those shows every year and helping out and, and get to get to view these flowers. So um, one of the things that I have come to learn is that when Buddhism was first introduced to Japan, you might remember the story of Prince Shotoku. He's in the altar next to Shinazoni, kind of right behind me, probably hidden on the far right, this sub altar over here. So Prince Shotoku um, welcomed the Buddhist teachings coming to Japan. And so he was the Prince Regent at the time and he was able to learn about Buddhism and study a little more deeply. So these are tremendous teachings. We should uh, welcome these teachings into Japan. And so because of his enthusiasm to support Buddhism, the first constitution of Japan was written with Buddhist principles as their guide guidelines. And so this was how Buddhism became kind of incorporated into the Japanese culture. And a large part of that was through Prince Shotoku. So during his time, he had a temple built and it had six sides. So six is Roku in Japanese. And so the temple was called Rokkakudo, and this temple had a small lake beside it, and then they built a residence for uh, the priest who would live there. So I'm assuming first Prince Shotoku would live there, and then later a uh, priest who took care of that temple would live at this small cottage next to the temple okay so the lake was used you know to partially bathe in and so the lake was recognized so ikenomo the name ikemono ikenomo ike means lake and bo means the cottage the residence where the priest lived so the, the cottage by the lake is the meaning of Ikenobu, of Ikebana flower arranging, okay? So this is connected to our temples, the Rokkakudo, Prince Shotoku, this whole story. And, and so when we look at our altar settings today, you know, originally flowers were just presented and provided in China. And this custom was brought to Japan and in Japan, they wanted to do things a little bit differently, a little bit more. And rather than providing and, and placing flowers on the altar, they wanted to arrange the flowers. So arrange rather than place, okay? So this styles of arrangement came to be. And so they would have these standing branches and flowers in a vase and such. And because of the connection to the temples, they would utilize these temple vases are generally bronze vases, and you won't see them used in Sogetsu or, or Ohara school. You know, I don't think very often, they'd be very rare. So they are uh, kind of the realm of the Ike, Ikenobo school. So you'll see in the Ikenobo school, they'll use bronze faces and they have this temple like you know sometimes Chinese temple uh, characteristics and so you'll see bronze faces used in the Ikenobo school and so still today we have these bronze faces that are that are part of the uh, 
temple altar setting. So altar arrangements, again, are different from Ikebana arrangements. This is not called Ikebana. It's called, it's just a flower offering, okay? So at the temple, we see the roots that they use these bronze bases, but you know, these are not Ikebana. I've had occasion, you know, some, maybe a funeral, and someone of the family has studied Ikenobo arranging, arranging, or they want something a little more stylized in the altar arrangement, so they'll ask and we put uh, you know, a different, their own arrangement in. You know, each situation is a little bit different. Generally speaking, if they have something, a different type of arrangement, if they do Ikebana in their family or something, you could put a separate pedestal or table to the side or on the floor and put that there and the altar arrangement should still be the altar arrangement that's different from Ikebana which is more of a stylized presentation of flower arranging okay so there's kind of a distinction there but there's a connection there so all of these things are uh, to me very interesting and I think it helps us and as we come to learn these stories, we come to have more appreciation when we go and see the Japanese Ikebana, you know what, from whatever school, if we see Jane setting up her students in the classroom here, in the social hall, you can observe and look and appreciate a little bit more when we come to a service, service here in the temple, and look at the flowers and how they were provided, presented by our flower toban people and appreciate the altar setting. A little bit different, but connection in our history. So all these, uh, we get to gain a deeper sense of appreciation for whatever setting we might be in and interwoven with this history of Prince Shotoku, uh, Buddhism coming to Japan and in all kind of these separate dots, we find the connections and we can appreciate all of this a little bit more. So I hope you were able to enjoy this flower Dharma talk. Yeah. Please join me with Gashou. We'll continue with this uh, whole walk for today. Namo Amidabutsu. 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 Okay, so thank you again for joining us. Again, uh, if you're at home viewing live stream, and send in your your thoughts. You know, did it go well? What was missing? You know, what happened to the voice? Uh, sensei, you look shorter, or whatever it might be. You know, send all your criticism, and then we'll we'll sort through everything and see how it goes. All right. And I'd like to thank everyone, uh, live attendance here today, uh, additional guests here today. Before service, we had the Dharma school in here. They had a brief lesson here in the in the Hondo before they went for their art class. And we have a lot of people that were involved to help set up. We had the flower arrangements and uh, the Obokpan rice offerings and also Naya uh, fruit offerings that are always provided. And the video people are still uh, they did their work beforehand and, and after the fact, but they're still key portions of this service. We thank everyone. So thank you again for being here. I'll light the incense here, and we can all come up to offer incense. And please do the same at home, however you have set up to do. So this will conclude. Let's close again. Please join me in Gasho one more time. Namo Amidabhutsu.
namanda 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 Yeah. So that's just like 